This video is going to look at relative formula mass and relative molecular mass calculations. So what is a relative formula mass and what is a relative molecular mass? They're almost the same thing, frankly. So a relative formula mass is the sum or total of the relative atomic masses of the atoms of different elements that make up a, a compound, accounting for the numbers shown in the formula presented to you. Uh, the reason why it's called relative formula mass is because it generally deals and applies to ionic compounds as shown at the bottom here with sodium chloride. How is relative molecular mass different? It's virtually the same. It's the sum or total of the relative atomic masses of the atoms of different elements that make up a molecule accounting for their numbers shown in the formula presented to you. Um, and it applies to covalently bonded molecules like hydrogen chloride rather than ionically bonded compounds like sodium chloride. So it's slightly different bonding involved in defining the two definitions. But essentially, the functionality is the same. They are adding the masses of the different atoms of different elements inside the compound together. Let me show you a few examples so you can see how this works. So you'll be presented with a formula for a particular compound or molecule. Here are three examples of ionic compounds. These, so these would all be relative formula masses. And all you need to do is to look out for different elements, which I've divided up with my dashed lines here. Okay, and also uh, any subscript numbers are the key important factors because subscript numbers affect the number of atoms of a particular uh, element present. Let's take magnesium chloride as our first example. So. Magnesium is one element and chlorine is a different element in this formula. But notice that the chlorine has this subscript too. Now, only applies to the chlorine, doesn't apply to magnesium here. What it's telling me is that I have one magnesium and two chlorine atoms making up this particular formula. I'm using the word atom loosely here. I know this is an ionic compound. I'm going to use the word atom throughout this for simplicity's sake. So what I would do is I would look up the mass of magnesium, the mass number for magnesium, and the mass number, in this case the relative atomic mass, for chlorine from the periodic table, that is the top number of, for the symbol of that element. I found magnesium is 24 and chlorine is 35.5. But now I realize that there are two chlorine atoms here. So it's 35.5 multiplied by two. So my overall calculation is 24 plus 35.5 times two equals 95. That's the relative formula mass of magnesium chloride. Let's look at example number two, aluminium fluoride. So aluminium, 27, look up fluorine, 19. But fluorine has the subscript number. There are three fluorine atoms present in this formula. So that's 19 multiplied by three. So bring that information together, 27 plus 19 times three is a total sum for that. the, the, the whole compound being 84. That's the relative formula mass for aluminium fluoride. Last simple example on this page before I go on to some more advanced examples is sodium sulfate. Okay, Na2SO4. Na2, two sodium atoms present, 23 times two. One sulfur, just 32, it's mass number. O4, subscript number four must be accounted for. That's 16 times four, four oxygens present here. So 23 times two plus 32 plus 16 times four equals a total sum of 142, being the relative formula mass of this compound. Okay, some more advanced examples might involve the use of brackets. So here are some bracketed examples. And let's start with this one on the left-hand side. So this is copper hydroxide. Now you'll note that the oxygen and hydrogen of the hydroxide ion are found within the brackets. And there's a number on the outside here. What that's doing as a mathematical function is this subscript number here is multiplying any atoms of different elements inside the bracket by this number. So I have copper, oxygen, hydrogen, Copper is outside the bracket and has no number associated with it, so that's one copper. Oxygen's inside the bracket, and this subscript number actually applies to it because it's inside the bracket. So we're multiplying the number of oxygens by the factor on the outside. So that's 16 for one oxygen multiplied by two if we expand the bracket. Hydrogen, there's one hydrogen inside the bracket multiplied by two due to the effect of the value on the outside of the bracket of which the hydrogen's inside. So actually, we've got 63.5 for one copper, 16 times two, for two oxygens, one times two for two hydrogens, 97.5 being the overall mass of that formula. Let's look at example number two, ammonium carbonate. So the N and the H of the ammonium ion are found within the bracket, and the C and the O of the carbon oxygen are found outside. So the carbon is 12, that's standard. The subscript number for the oxygen still applies, 16 times three, that's 
that's pretty straightforward. Let's find out what's going on inside the bracket. Nitrogen is found inside the bracket, the number on the outside is two. That means we're multiplying what's inside by the number outside, two times nitrogen, two times 14. There are four hydrogens on the inside of the bracket and the multiplying value is two. That's four times two. There's actually eight hydrogen atoms present in this formula. Four times two is eight. There are eight hydrogens. So 14 times two for the two nitrogens, one times eight for the eight hydrogens, 12 for the carbon, 16 times three for the three oxygens. The total relative formula mass of this entire formula is 96. Last example, aluminium sulfate, okay? Al2 outside the brackets, that means we have two aluminium atoms outside the bracket. Sulfur is inside the bracketed area and there's a multiplying factor of three on the outside. That means three times sulfur is present, three times one sulfur. Oxygen's on the inside of the bracket and there are four of them, okay, 16 times four, but the multiplying factor on three is also coming into play. So we have four oxygens multiplied by three. Four times three is 12. There are actually 12 oxygens in this formula. And we have to account for the mass of each of those oxygens. So 27 times two for the two aluminiums. 32 times three for the three sulfurs. 16 times 12 for the actual 12 oxygens, four times three oxygens present if we factor in both the number inside the bracket and the factor on the outside having an effect. It is not four plus three, it is four times three. 12 oxygens, giving us a total relative formula mass of 342. Quite an advanced example there. Now the highest level examples would include something called water of crystallization, usually coming across these in hydrated salt examples. Now water crystallization is essentially water molecules that are intrinsically part of the giant iron extractor itself. They're not dissolving the compounds in water. These water molecules are part of the structure and therefore must be included in the relative mass calculation. So let's take the example on the left. Magnesium sulfate, seven water, dot seven H2O. That's seven molecules of water as part of the overall formula itself. So 24 for the magnesium, 32 for the sulfur, 16 times four for four oxygens, no problems there, that's normal. Now we've got to count what the water's bringing to the table. Seven H2O, seven H2s are also part of this formula. You can even think about that as, as one times two for the hydrogen times seven, or you can think about it as 17 hydrogens. Either way, that's 17 times one or seven times two for the, for the influence of the H2 in the seven waters. And there are also seven oxygens coming from the seven water molecules that are part of this formula. So that's seven times 16. So bringing the whole thing together, it is 24 for the, for the magnesium, 32 for the sulfur, 16 times four for the oxygens is magnesium sulfate, seven times two or 14 times one for the effect, the, the additional mass of the hydrogens from the water molecules, and seven times 16 for the additional oxygens from the water molecules that are part of the overall formula, giving it the total mass, relative mass of 246. Here is the single most exa uh, advanced example in the whole set, which is a um, bracket example with water crystallization as well. Okay, so barium, mass number 137, oxygen, Inside the brackets, so multiply by the number outside, there are actually two oxygens here. One oxygen times two is 16 times two. One hydrogen times two, the number on the outside, again, having an effect, because it's inside the bracket, there's one times two. Dot eight H2O, dot eight H2. So either there is um, yeah, eight times two for the eight times H2, or even 16 times one, if you individualize those hydrogens, there's 16, eight, eight times two is 16. There are 16 hydrogen atoms here to account for. And there's also eight oxygens from the eight waters here, so 16 times eight. Bring that all together, 137 for the barium, 16 times two for the oxygens inside the hydroxide ions, one times two for the hydrogens inside the, oxide, the hydroxide ions, eight times two or one times 16 for the hydrogens coming from the water molecules, there are eight of them, 16 times eight for the uh, eight oxygens coming from the water molecules, part of the structure. Total relative formula mass for the entire compound, the entire compound is 315. So that will help you guys solve any relative formula mass or molecular mass calculation you come across, even the most advanced examples we can possibly think of.